So I knew that it was coming. I've done everything that I've come to do. So I was crushed for about two, two years. Well, it's not your game. You didn't make the rules. So everything comes hard. As long as you're signed to a contract, you're gonna take a minority share of the winnings. A select few of us will do well. The majority will not. What really happened to Tyka Nelson, the beloved sister of music legend Prince? Why did her life end so mysteriously, just as whispers of her brother's untimely death gained traction? The person that oh, used to do business with them is no longer with them because he no longer wanted to do biz business with Jay-Z and Diddy. Is it all a coincidence? Or do powerful music giants like Jay-Z and Clive Davis have a hand in the shadows, pulling strings to hide dark secrets about Prince's legacy? Why do y'all think Prince changed his name to a symbol so they couldn't own the rights to what he did? It was the smartest thing ever. Everybody thought he was crazy. No. From the controversial moments leading up to Tyka's death to explosive claims about Prince's feud with Jay-Z, let's dive into this deep mystery that's shaking the music world to its core. Jaguar Wright, known for her unfiltered take on the industry, has cast an accusatory spotlight on some of music's most influential names, Jay-Z and Clive Davis. But this time, she's not just talking about any artist. She's talking about Tyka Nelson, the only full sibling of Prince who tragically passed away. And with her death comes a wave of questions and suspicions, particularly about why it happened now. Prince defied the odds. A black teen from Minneapolis with a goal to electrify the world. He had the courage to be different. Tyka Nelson, Prince's younger sister, wasn't just family. She was his closest confidant. Imagine growing up in a home where music was like the family language. Their dad, John L. Nelson, was a jazz musician, and their mom, Maddie Shaw, sang too. So Tyka and Prince practically had music in their DNA. But unlike her brother, Tyka's life would end up being anything but glamorous. She faced serious struggles from career letdowns to battles with addiction. And even though she was always overshadowed by Prince, she stayed close to him and even tried to make her own way in music. Though it was clear that fame hit the family lottery with him. So here's how it all went down. Tyka released her first album, Royal Blue, back in 1988, hoping to step out of Prince's shadow and make her own name. But the world wasn't exactly waiting for a second Nelson sibling to blow up the charts. Tyka's music didn't exactly take off, but that didn't stop her from trying to carve out a spot for herself. Did you manage to capture Jaguar Wright, known for her soulful voice and daring criticism of entertainment giants? didn't hold back when she took aim at Jay-Z and Beyonce in her most recent revelations on Piers Morgan. If you haven't heard them yet, you're in for a ride because her claims have sent shockwaves through the music industry. Wright made the shocking suggestion that the famous power couple may be connected to some problematic aspects of the industry. She also alluded to their potential involvement in the deaths of Michael Jackson and Aaliyah claiming to have witnesses ready to back up her allegations. Like her issues with addiction, it was no secret, but it also wasn't a headline that followed her around. Instead, Tyka kept quietly trying to keep her life and music career on track, staying out of the limelight. But everything changed when Prince passed away suddenly in 2016. With his shocking death came a whole new wave of attention on Tyka, who suddenly became the main point of contact for his legacy. Prince didn't leave a will, which meant a lot of legal drama. But Tyka took it on herself to step up, hoping to make sure her brother's memory was protected. She pushed to turn Paisley Park, his famous home and studio, into a museum. While some family members thought it was too soon or too businessy, Tyka felt it was the only way to honor Prince's work and give his fans a place to remember him. He's not here physically, but through Paisley Park and his music, he'll live on forever. Still, this commitment wasn't easy. Tyka had to face off with industry bigwigs who wanted a piece of Prince's pie. She started getting pushback from people who didn't exactly see eye to eye with her on how Prince's memory should be handled. I had been preparing for two years, so I knew that it was coming. And it wasn't just about Paisley Park. The people in charge of Prince's estate, his money, and his music catalog weren't always willing to let Tyka call the shots. She faced constant pressure, and as musician Jaguar Wright once hinted, going up against industry giants can be dangerous. They're used to controlling artists' legacies and making money off them. No one likes it when a family member steps in and insists things go a different way. In fact, Jaguar Wright has pointed out that Hollywood and the music industry aren't kind to anyone who tries to hold onto an artist's legacy if it gets in the way 
way of business. For Taika, trying to preserve what Prince stood for meant she was suddenly in the middle of some very powerful people who weren't thrilled with her choices. She became the gatekeeper of Prince's legacy. And it's rumored that she had more than one heated conversation with executives who wanted to profit off Prince's work in ways that went against his wishes. Ultimately, mm. Taika's commitment to preserving Prince's legacy may have even isolated her a bit. Some people close to her said she was relentless and wouldn't back down, even when things got ugly. And while she never had the fame or success her brother did, Taika became almost as important in the Prince story as he was. She was the one protecting his memory, dealing with all the behind-the-scenes drama, and pushing back against anyone who wanted to exploit him. It wasn't an easy job. In fact, it was more like an uphill battle. Family disagreements, industry giants pushing her around, and media scrutiny. Let's examine this shocking revelation. Jaguar Wright didn't mince words when she criticized Jay-Z, calling him a monster and even drawing comparisons between him and Diddy, who, as you may know, is currently involved in major legal issues. According to Wright, the rumors she has been hearing about Jay-Z from her sources are equally as unsettling as the accusations made against Diddy. There, and he was not there at the house of own. And he was, was quiet. the worst part of that yeah, To see his sons being hacked. Do you force your kids to do your perp walk? That was the that was the worst part, and all I could think about was Kim and Misa. Mm. The girls. Just her son. He, he left their son yeah. to be walked out backwards on camera for the world to see. Thank God Kimura got the girls. Yeah. Misa's son. Misa and Wolf's son. <laughs> Man. And Quincy's missing. Quincy's missing. Oh. And lastly. After he was questioned by the feds. After. I wouldn't be surprised if he was in witness protection right now. Which means his father ain't never gonna see him again. Have we seen the last, or is this just the beginning of that saga? It's just getting started. True. Which is why I think people are so uncomfortable about me being in this position right now because of my press pass and because I'm gonna be in the courtroom for the Keefe D trial. If we get to the bottom of Tupac's when that is finally revealed, 15 other will be revealed with it. And you will find that they were all committed by the same two people, father and son. Were you surprised by QPD's arrest for Tupac? No. I'm just surprised that he hasn't given it up yet. I'm surprised that he hasn't gone to the feds yet because he just got stabbed in jail. Yes, he did. He's been beaten three times. And I'm going to say it for a fact, I know you the one pulling the strings, Reggie Wright Jr. Stop putting your dirty work on other people. You know exactly what you are. And so help me God, if you don't keep my man, my your mouth. Mm. Mm. With, um... She criticized Jay-Z for keeping quiet about Diddy's predicament, saying he was the kind to start a fight and then back off. Her comments create a damning picture, and if accurate, they throw a harsh light on some of the most influential people in the music industry, while others cope with the fallout. You talk about Bad Boy, you yeah. speak on Heavy D, you speak on I'll Be Sure, yeah. and you say like, look who's standing and now i'll be sure is now he's being cryptic not too cryptic but he's now he's very cryptic he's very cryptic but but he's speaking, he's speaking louder than he's ever spoken before ever and the reason why he's cryptic is for the sake of his son mm. imagine having an enemy 
that has a position of influence in your child's life and knowing that that person sends you notes and messages every now and then, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, that boy is allegedly. Imagine that. Imagine your baby mama is telling you that if you don't do what he wants you to do, he's going to be a child. And you know he's capable of it. Allegedly. Story in the Bible. Two women had two babies. Mm-hmm. One woman went to sleep, rolled over on her baby baby. The other woman's baby was just fine. The woman whose baby, she got up, she went and stole the baby from her, her roommate. Then they fought over who the mother was. They went before the king, King Solomon. He heard both sides of the story and said, give me a knife. Give me a sword. He got the sword and he was like, I'm going to cut the baby in half and each of you can have a piece and then we'll be done with it. It was the real mother that said, don't harm that baby, she can have him. Wow. Why is nobody willing to accept as monstrous as people are finding out that Diddy is now that he wouldn't be willing to split Quincy in half? Cause he would. Yeah, he said some years ago, like during a TV show, that he would like harm his own mother to get what he wanted, or some something along those lines. So, well, I don't blame him for wanting to harm that. She's his victimizer and his pimp. She his first pimp. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, it, you know your Bible story. I have to just sidetrack real quick and ask you this question, yeah. uh, or get your thoughts on it. <laughs> Uh, there's a man who uh, recently married conjoined twins mm. and uh, he's only marrying one of them. Things become even more heated when Wright says she has witnesses prepared to testify against Jay-Z. Although she didn't provide names or supporting documentation, her statements imply that these are serious charges that, if confirmed, could destroy the polished image that Jay-Z and Beyonce have built over the years. Okay. But all the freak of part, alleged participants was there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All the alleged ha- uh, undercover home niggas and women were there. You know what I'm saying? So he he, he felt at home to, to make that move. Do do you feel um like ja, like ja Rule was part of that? Do do you know uh, personally know ja Rule? Yeah, I know Ja. Do you feel like he on that type of time? I never seen him uh, do anything uh, for me to say that he he he's on that type of time. Okay, got you. Yeah, Ja Rule seemed cool, man. I had him on the show and all that, man. But I, you know, when that news came out, I'm like, damn, bro. I hope the homie ain't ain't you know switch sides on us or nothing. Well, what news? What's that? What news are you referring to? Well, basically, uh, th- those claims that, you know, Gene Deal put out there, man, um, about them being in, in, in the room together. Oh, come on, when Gene uh, Deal was God in the freak door? Exactly. That, and that, that, and that. Ja Cousin tried to come and go in. And he's like, nah, nigga, it's the freak door. <laughs> you can't go in here. <laughs> you already said, there's some real freaky shit going on there. But just because uh, Ja Diddy because I think they said Ja Diddy and two chicks was in the room. You know what I'm saying? So that they could have just been, you know, I don't know what they could have been doing, but he he didn't he didn't insinuate that Diddy and Ja was doing anything. He kind of made it seem like they was in there popping off with some chicks. Okay, okay. So I, I'm not going I'm not going to try to throw Ja in that mix. Now, if it was all niggas in there, then you know what I'm saying. That's, but that's, for me, I'm, I'm gonna give God the benefit of the doubt because right. he said it was they asked him. I, he, I think he named who was in there, but I just can't remember. But it, I know it was like two women. It wasn't a bunch of dudes. Like the part that's a lot of people are uh, leaving out that it was two women in there. It wasn't just them two in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Strange things. You mentioned in one of your interviews that you feel like your career was kind of hindered because you didn't give in 
um, to zesty activities. That's a fact. Were you being pressured by like higher ups to kind of, you know, do do weird things, or what, why do you feel that way? Although there have always been suspicions about Illumin Teas and shady business practices, conspiracy theories concerning the Carters are not new. However, Jaguar WS accusations go farther, suggesting something much more sinister than simple power struggles or backstage drama. The situation has escalated since Diddy's arrest, during which he has faced numerous lawsuits from individuals who claim he misconducted them. As these legal battles unfold, troubling allegations have surfaced, indicating that his well-known friends may have been aware of Diddy's actions, often referred to as his freak-offs. These friends are now seemingly scrambling to delete any evidence that might implicate them. During an interview with the Law & Crime Network, Busby expressed his strong belief that many of these celebrity associates are indeed scrubbing their social media. We also have collected pictures, videos, texts, we check venues, we check dates. We want to corroborate that the claims being made have legitimacy and merit. He noted that they might be searching through their memories and deleting texts, photos, and any other information that could connect them to Diddy's legal issues. Busby stated, I have no doubt that there are people right now who know that they were somehow involved in this. He warned that although this process of uncovering the truth will take time, they are just beginning to scratch the surface of the situation. Busby highlighted the difficulties victims face when coming forward about their experiences. He emphasized the importance of resolving these matters without public lawsuits, as it is often in the best interest of the victims. If you're out there and you have been victimized, you are not alone. There is a great strength in numbers. You can seek redress. You can obtain justice. We can help you and we will help you. To that end, Busby has already managed to settle cases with several individuals, many of whom are known figures in the entertainment industry. He also made a public appeal for other victims of Diddy to come. Wright also mentions Michael Jackson and Aaliyah, two figures that millions of people adore. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, died inexplicably, while Aaliyah, the RB princess, perished in a terrible aircraft disaster. Uh, by the hip, and they both share the same bottom parts. Mm. Um, is there anything that you feel wrong with that? Freaky or indifferent? I mean, question is, what's wrong with the down with it? <laughs> <laughs> It does raise questions. Like you forcing your sister to get ready so you can it, get off. It, well, the sister says she has to put on headphones to kind of zone out. Yeah, but out. she's still feeling it. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> that is still happening. You forcing your sister to get ready. Yeah. She don't want that nigga. <laughs> you, you want that nigga. That's what I hear. As a selfish bitch. <laughs> So, so, <laughs> right. She's sitting over there with her headphones on. <laughs> la, 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 la. Who, <laughs> what kind of <laughs> wants to be in those kind of conditions? <laughs> I'm only in love with the right side of you. Yeah. The left side. I don't know who that bitch She can get this to. Right. Like, that's how this sounds. Crazy. crazy. Yeah. I don't know if my mind like, sounded crazy. No, you're right. You're you making some points. Valid points. Everybody selfish except for the, the headphones. The thing that's tripping me out is, why don't you grab, like, are you in control of any part of the body? Like, you need to take a free head and start beating the out of them every time they get the I bet you he don't want it no more then. Like, give you a little skillet. And as soon as I get the fuck pay, pay, headphone, bitch, get a pay. Like, I don't want to la 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 la. We hope she finds a man herself. We hope. I can't. We hope she finds a man herself. I so can. <laughs> wild in this world, yo. It's funny, you open up uh, Beyonce's internet, it just gets weird. Um, Beyonce's internet. That's what we're calling that it. That belongs to the devil. <laughs> Unless 
you calling that the devil? She ain't number the employee. Oh, oh. A half of which dumbass bitch. Calling Jay Z and Beyonce nasty little couple, Wright didn't hold back. Her remarks immediately questioned the Carter's flawless image, which has been based on their music, fortune, power, and family. If even a small portion of her allegations are accurate, they suggest a far darker side to their success. I think she's. She went and killed the girl cats! <sighs> <sighs> Okay. A girl went to court mm. and charged her with extreme witchcraft. Mm. She she was hypnotized. She was drugged. Beyonce came and she was in there eating on her and shit while she was asleep. Oh. No snacking on his bitch. Killing people cats. Mm. And guess what? They wouldn't give her the restraining order. They just told her to stay away from Beyonce and work for somebody else. Guess what? She's having a hard time finding work too, which is interesting because she's a brilliant musician and she was trained at the Berkeley, esteemed Berkeley College of Music, handpicked by my very good friend, Terry Lynn Carrington, Dr. Terry Lynn Carrington, who put together Beyonce's entire female band, which was Matthew Knowles' idea because he couldn't get Beyonce to stop people. Guess you didn't know your daughter well enough because she just started f***ing all the girls. Impulse control issues? I don't know. What makes you so vocal? Like... I'm tired. See, so just... I like, didn't want to skip to the end. Yeah, all this shit is f***ed up. All you is is weird. Go to f*** the jail and let's move on and let Generation Z make their own Problems make their own choices. These kids are living the consequences of what Gen X did and don't even know why they're doing it because everyone's lying. So, so corporate takeoff's death was nothing but a corporate hostile takeover using his life as the god. For, oh my god. Man, RP takeoff. <sighs> Yeah, 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 that's actually that's been a recurring theme. So, yeah, yeah, well, what, 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 right now, too. Damn, what's what's the going rate right now? <laughs> well, uh, I'll send you a video. Damn, okay, that's shit. In this situation, they have fifty on me. <laughs> oh shit! Oh my damn! Fifty ball. Yeah, damn. That's a nigga. What? They have fifty on me. <laughs> they have fifty yeah, on me, bro. Man. And if you don't mind why you put that up, can you uh, speak on why? I mean, I know you about to send it, but what for what reason? Is it something you said, something you done? A female you protected? Maybe it right, too far. Right, right. So like I had referenced earlier, like my main business model is taking, is protecting females who got the proper resources. So <sighs> these guys had, uh, hold on, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna send you that video. Oh yeah, let me get that right now before I forget. So, uh, matter of fact, let me just do this before I start. This is a, a dark topic right now. <sighs> Fuck. You can see some strippers or something, bro. I'm trying to get interested. Oh, okay, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right, Joker, coming to you right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so uh, this is what you did to a uh, to, to young man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when I had 50 on me. Yeah, I had to shoot through the door. And like the dude who said call 911, he got hit in the neck, hit an artery, shot blood all through the ceiling on the porch, everywhere. It is crucial to remember that these are still only assertions as of right now. Neither Jay-Z nor Beyonce have responded to such accusations, and considering their past, they may choose to stay mute. 
Their typical strategy in the face of criticism is to let their silence speak for them. In New York, as many of you know, our law firm has been at the forefront of some of the most important litigation in the United States. We like the tough cases. We thrive in the complicated cases. Conduct we will describe today occurred over more than 20 years. And we're going to follow this evidence wherever it takes us. We will find the silent accomplices. We will expose the enablers who enable this conduct behind closed doors. We will pursue this matter, no matter who the evidence implicates. The entertainment industry is cooked. Can you imagine how many other famous people and big executives are probably involved in this? These brave victims who have stepped forward deserve nothing less. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us, people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. We now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. So they said they vetted. That's what it caught out right there, but they were vetted. 120 people. Claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants as we file these individual cases. We also intend to make these individuals available to the authorities, specifically to the FBI. And you should also know a few of them have already been spoken to by the FBI. That being said, as stated, we are vetting every call that we receive. We have had to turn away some. For each, we ask for corroboration. For each, we ask for the identity of witnesses. We also have collected pictures, videos, texts, we check venues, we check dates. We want to corroborate that the claims being made have legitimacy and merit. We have on staff now a former detective from the Major Offenders Unit of Houston Police Department who is helping us vet each claim. We're using our common sense. We're being stringent because as I said, these are not easy cases. They're very tough. The process is hard and in some cases the process is very lengthy. These cases are hard to prove. Many times it's the victim's word against the alleged perpetrator. Each of these victims will no doubt be publicly attacked by the alleged perpetrators and in some cases the general public. The feckless and cowardly keyboard warriors love to attack. We know what we're up against. Wait, is there anyone in support of Diddy? Is that a thing? Does Diddy actually have diehard fans that aren't like shitting on him right now? Is that, I've literally never seen a single one. Everyone's just like, yeah, this guy's psycho. As I said, our law firms have been retained by 120 individuals at this point to pursue cases in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. It is evenly divided between males and females. There are 60 males and 60 females who have joined us to pursue these claims as plaintiffs. In this group, 62% identifies African-American, 30% are white, and the remainder Hispanic or Asian. The victims are from more than 25 states. The majority are from California, New York, Georgia, and Florida. This guy's menace. I want to focus on the ages of these victims. When we talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence is, was nine years old. Okay, I didn't know about that. I thought this what? Rights charges are being more widely circulated online, igniting discussions amongst supporters and detractors. She is dismissed by some as attention-seeking. Others think she's finally revealing what many have suspected for years. If you're talking about standing out, like attending a play, it's about making an impression, either with your knowledge or your presence, similar to those who take risks in the entertainment industry.